Now that I have the floor looking the way I want it to look, uh, I want to bring in some image files of my own. I'm, I've kind of exhausted what I can find in, in the, within the SketchUp library, and I want to start bringing in my own image because uh, my plan here is to have a back wall up against this, this outline with uh, plaster texture, and then I want to put a piece of artwork that I found onto that wall. So first things first, I'm going to give a little, the slab a little bit of thickness so that the wall has something to sit on. So I'm just going to go back six inches here. I'm just going to draw a line at that point from point to point. And just for the sake of uh, this demonstration, I'm going to reapply this. So I'll click on my default texture and I'm going to reapply the default texture to that piece underneath so that there's no tile happening below. So now I'm going to close that and draw my wall. So I'll click from point to point. I'm just going to double click on this, make that a group, of course. Double click to open it up, and then P for push pull. And I'm just going to bring this wall up 10 feet. That's a little high. Let's go 8 foot 6. Okay. Now, I have a piece of artwork that I found. It looks like this. And I want to bring this artwork in and make it the exact size I know it is. So, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to say that I know for a fact that the width of this is 3 feet. And the height is just about two foot two and a half. So, how do I bring this into my model? If I'm working on a PC, when I'm under materials and I'm under select, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this little bo box right here, this little button that shows a little tiny um, material box with a plus sign. That's your add new material button. So that's where you're gonna find that you can bring in a new material. For my purposes, since I'm working on a Mac, what I have to do is I'm going to start from my home. Um, I always like to start from the home because I don't want to bring the new material into one of the other um, into one of the other material folders. So I'm within the home of the of the SketchUp file, and I go down to New Texture. And what it's going to let me do is it's going to let me browse here on my computer for what that new texture is going to be. So I'm going to click on Artwork, and I'm going to open this up because this is the name of the file I've given it. So it just so happens that it has given me three feet already because I've brought it in at three feet before. But in this case, let's pretend that it was coming in at four feet or something a little bit larger. I can now, before I bring this in, type in my three feet here, and it's going to automatically maintain that ratio of what those, of what those dimensions were to begin with. So if I have my control for the width set at three feet, it's going to give me the automatic two foot two and basically a half um, height. So I can say OK. And I get my, I can see that it's now appearing in my home palette. So what I want to do is I want to make a rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle on this wall. And I'm not even worried how big it is because I'm going to resize it down to size once I put my material on it. Because this is an object, this needs to have some dimensionality. I, I, I don't like um, any any materials that I put on something to be flat because if I were to, let's go ahead and group this first, if I were to just apply my black material to this, you're going to see that it's flickering like this. And the reason for this flicker is because I've got a wall and I've got a flat face sitting right on top of it. So that's going to flicker because I'm, I'm sometimes seeing the wall and I'm sometimes seeing the flat face. And they're basically occupying exactly the same plane in space, so they're, they're competing for my visibility. So what I need to do is I need to give this some actual dimension. So I'm just going to come out one inch and shut that down. Now I can apply my material. And because this is a painting, I'm just going to double click on this and click on one face and apply the material to just that one face. Click. So you'll notice that it's tiling. So you can see that it's repeating over and over again. Um, this, if I take my tape measure from one side to this side, is my three feet. So at three feet, three feet enter, that's exactly how far it needs to be brought, brought in. So I'm just going to push pull this, this face from this side to my tape measure, and I'm going to push pull the top down, let me get a little close while I do it, until I hit the point roughly where that stops. So now I can click to shut that down. I'm going to go ahead and move this over a little bit. 
I'm going to shift D to delete that guide because I don't need it anymore. And I'm just going to center this on the wall. So I'm going to hold my shift down as I'm moving it and I'm going to go up and I'm going to touch my, my um, mid, middle line there. And then I'm going to center this at about, let's just do it at about 5 feet, enter for the eye height. So I'm going to center it at about 5 feet. So I'll bring it up to that point. And shift D because I don't need that anymore. Now I want to put a frame around it. So to do that, I'm going to do a rectangle again. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle right around it and double click on that, make it a group, double click on it again to open it. And I'm just going to offset from that rectangle out. And now I can delete that interface. So I select it and delete it. And I need to bring in a new material for this, for this uh, frame. But I don't know how big this material needs to be because the frame is going to have a different dimension to it. So in this case, I'm going to use a different way of editing. So I always start with the default material when I'm bringing in a new material because I don't want any of the properties that are assigned to these materials in terms of size or proportion to get, to get um, stuck to that new material. So if I start from the default, it's going to give me a fresh, a fresh set of dimensions. So when I go to color, new texture, again, if you're working on the PC, if you're working on a PC, you're going to go here to this little button. Under your, and make sure select is, is uh, I don't think actually you have to worry about, but I would make sure that select is, is the uh, tab you have open. So I'm going to now choose my, from, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to navigate to my desktop where I've got the frame. So this is the frame I'm going to be bringing in. And I'm going to open that up. And it's saying three feet, that's fine. I'm not worried about what it says for now. So I'm just going to say, okay. Now I select that material and I'm going to click on this face. So you can see what I've got is something that's a little bit distorted, or it's really tiling vertically, and it's not the right size. So I need to right-click on this, and I need to go Texture Position. First things first, I need to rotate this 90 degrees this way. So I'm just going to manually do that. Next up, I need to scale it so that it fits around the outside. And I'm looking for this inside face to fit around that gray, that gray shape, which I've just about got. Now I can use my blue to squeeze it in a little bit so that when I move this over and adjust it, it sits right where it needs to sit. Now I can right click and I can say done. Now all that needs to happen and close that out. All that needs to happen is this needs to stretch out a little bit. So I need to move these lines until I get to the end. And I'm just going to use the back wall as a reference point. So I'm selecting line by line, one at a time, and I'm just using the back wall as a reference point to drag these lines down. And out. So I'm just selecting lines one at a time and moving them until they get to the edge of the material. Done. So now I've got my framed piece of art on the wall. Finally, I'm going to make this back wall plaster. So I'm going to start again from my fresh default material, and I'm going to go to my new texture. And I select plaster wall. Notice that the size of this is 4.1 megabytes. I'm going to be bringing some of that heaviness into this file, so I suggest before you bring materials of your own in that you go into a photo editing program and bring them down so that they're not so heavy. So you might want to reduce the, um, the DPI from something like 300 to 72 or even 100 is fine. Um, you don't need a huge, huge file, photo, uh, photo imaging, I'm sorry, you don't need a huge, huge photo file in your model because it's not going to make a huge difference. So I'll say open, and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with that other wall on this. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and go to my select tool and double click to open up, and click on that plaster wall, and click on that one face. And you can see it's tiling, so I'm just going to texture, I'm just going to bump this, this position of this texture up a little bit so it's a little bit more extreme. Go ahead and say done and close it when I'm done. And if I wanted to take some of the saturation out of this, I can go in and I can edit this still, 
and I can edit it the classic way. Despite the fact that I've just bumped it up, I can still go through my classic editing. So I can still go to my color wheel. I can make this lighter or darker by pulling down, up or down on this. And then I can go to my hue, saturation, and lightness. And I can drag the saturation way down so it goes all the way to gray. And it's taking a little while because the file's a little bigger now that I've brought something in that's heavy. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that. It's a good example of why you want to minimize your, your file sizes that you bring in. So that's the nuts and bolts of bringing in your own material. Next video, we're going to get into how to edit the material so that you can tile it better.